there's one lord we haven't talked about. We've talked about so many of the Empire Lords so far, but there's one that we really haven't gone into, or into. And I think he's probably the most unique of the Empire Legendary Lord special characters, whatever you want to call them. And that is Marius Leitdorf, Elector Count of Averland. So in today's video, we'll do our typical kind of a uh, little shtick here. We'll talk about the uh, actual 8th edition lore blurb from him, his special rules, and how he might be incorporated into Total War Warhammer 2. So let's kind of uh, dive in on this here today. Uh, I hope to have some, some fun here because this is unfortunately our last one. We haven't done... Carl Franz or Balthazar Gelt, and if you or even Volkmar the Grim. So if you guys want me to do them, I can do them. So at least you know what the eighth edition um, information is. Oh, I'm sorry, we've actually done Gelt, but we haven't done Franz or uh, Volkmar. So if you guys do want to know what their actual lore blurb is like, I am more than happy to go into it for you guys if you want. Um, I might be able just to do them together in one video, so you can just kind of hear what they're what they're all about. But I really wanted to talk about again. Marius Leitdorf, the Electric Count of Averland. Renowned as the Mad Count, Marius Leitdorf's reputation has spread far across the Old World. Most knew Marius for his eccentricities, his bouts of screaming rage, his periods of melancholy, and his mercurial conduct at court. Indeed, it is common knowledge that he relied on the advice of his warhorse, Daisy Kurt von Helboring II, as much as any of his advisors. In fact, his outrageous behavior and roguish improperties with the daughters and wives of the noble houses were such that few other counts welcomed him in their courts. One of Leitdorf's harshest critics was Kurt Helborg, who, according to the Mad Count, had a poor mustache, worse dental hygiene, and a sense of humor to rival a troll. On the last point, at least, Marius' judgment was correct, and the enmity between the two was legendary. However, Leitdorf's reputation did him a gross disservice, while he was a clearly unconventional in his manners and flamboyant in his clothing. He had an incisive mind. Indeed, he was an accomplished poet and an inventor of some standing. Furthermore, Leitdorf was an exceptional swordsman and military tactician who led his armies with considerable flair and skill. In fact, a number of great victories are owed to his insane courage and uncanny insights, and Karl Franz counted Leitdorf amongst his most trusted allies. It was with genuine regret that the Emperor saw Marius fall in battle whilst they led their armies against a massive orc invasion. With his passing, the Empire was robbed of one of its greatest, if most unpredictable, heroes. So, we have, uh, again, Marius Leitdorf here, the Elector Count of Avalon, summon the Elector Counts. And um, it's cool because you, you guys get a sense here that there are all these guys from all these different portions of the Empire. And we've seen with the Queen of the Crone DLC, or at least with the Resurgent patch, that not only is Creative Assembly willing to revisit old races, they're willing to give them new starting positions and really kind of spice up those factions. So hopefully these legendary lords offer a really amazing way to spice up the Empire, which I think everyone can really agree is is hopefully the next in, in line of uh, improvements to factions. They're just so behind the curve as far as um, power goes from a competitive standpoint, fun goes from a campaign standpoint, diversity goes from an army and a lord standpoint. I mean, they're really just, they don't size up to a, a Total War Warhammer 2 faction. But Again, this is this is a lore video, not a uh, critique video. So let's talk a little bit about who is Marius Leitdorf from a special rule standpoint. Now, he actually doesn't have a ton of special rules. He's got one special rule, and that one special rule is all that he'll ever fucking need. It's called the Mad Count. And the way this works in tabletop is you basically make a leadership roll, and if you pass it, you roll on a table. And the table's got one to six. You roll just one a, a one d six. So it's it's got a result for each one of those rolls. So let's talk about those results. So lunatic ravings, Marius recites poetry, does impersonations of the Reich Marshal, and sings body songs about rotund maidens. Number two is berserk rage. The Mad Count's favorite shirt is ruined, and he enters an unreasoning rage. Number three is paranoid delusions. Leitdorf, Leitdorf is convinced that both his allies and his shadows are out to get him. For tactical brilliance, after consuming his warhorse Daisy, Marius raises his army, I'm sorry, realizes his army needs to be reformed at once. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's not consuming. Oh my god. After consulting his warhorse Daisy, Marius realizes his army needs to be reformed at once. I could have edited that out, but there's no way in hell I was going to like rob you guys of that awesome blooper. 
So number five, outrageous insult. The mad count mocks his foe's girth, poor dress sense, and foul odor. And number six, insane bravado. Uh, Marius believes himself to be invincible and charges off to smite his foes. Now, each one of these obviously incurs a special rule. Lunatic raving makes it so that he's stupid. It gives him the stupidity. He has to make a stupidity test. Uh, Berserker rage gives him frenzy. Uh, paranoid delusions makes it so that he actually attacks the person closest to him. Tactical brilliance means that he can reform everyone. Um, and outrageous insult gives the the closest hero or enemy character for that matter. Hatred towards him and then insane bravado gives him basically berserk and stubborn. So a lot of benefits and a lot of not so good things. So pretty much it's every, what is this? Every odd choice is not good. Every even choice is good. So how could this be done in Total War Warhammer 2? Now, I, I kind of thought long and hard about this. How could you do it? Could it be a random thing that just kind of generates and happens and you don't know? Um, could you have maybe access to just the good abilities and the bad ones are just kind of there because they're there? Uh, or they're just they're part of his character and that's just you you know it from lore and maybe he only gets the good ones because outside of this he's pretty he's a relatively lackluster character that's kind of a shitty way of doing it but you could do it like that what i think would be really cool is what if in place of an ability he had the renault renald's coin like when you go to uh gamble to see if you get more wins of magic and what if you clicked that and one of these abilities have popped up. So for, for you know, lunatic ravings, rather than making it stupid, it automatically trigger, triggers. So basically, for the for the good things, it automatically triggers. triggers. Uh, I'm sorry, for the good things, it's an activatable. And for the bad things, it automatically triggers. So lunatic ravings, automatically he goes off into rampage and you can't control him for a little bit. Um, Berserker rage, it just gives him frenzy. Great and cool. Um, paranoid delusions. Um, this was the one that, oh yes, this randomly does an explosion that hurts friendly people. Maybe something of the sort, a small explosion, not a huge one, but something that kind of of the sort that you get with, um, Krokgar, where he does an explosion to get away from things. Maybe this is a smaller scale explosion. So if he's involved in broiled in combat, it'll actually hurt his own troops. Um, tactical brilliance. I could just look at this as maybe a hold the line or a leadership buff. Um, outrageous insult would be really cool if it, if it just buffed the closest character to him. Um, or maybe all the characters on the map. Uh, I think that'd be kind of a really cool, interesting one. Like, it give them like a small weapon damage and a, a melee attack increase. Um, and then Insane Bravado gives him some variation of Berserk Rage and also Stubborn. Maybe it just gives him Frenzy and Stubborn at the same time. Now, I, I, it's, it's, it's totally a wild card, and it's hard to do that. Like, maybe you click the... Every time you click it, so say so you click the uh, the mad count ability once. Ronald's coin spins and the ability lands and you activate it. Then it recycles immediately. And once you click it again, it could be another one of these. So every 120, 115 seconds, whatever the typical recycle is, you have a chance of triggering another one of these abilities. And it might be bad, it might be good. That's like a, it's totally experimental, obviously. It might not even work at all. It might be just completely shit. But I think it'd be a really fun way to do this because I can't really think of a, of a way that you would put this into the game that is true to form. They've they've done a little bit of the of the randomness of Skaven in a somewhat good way. And actually, I'll say in a, in a pretty good way. The, the way that they they kind of make Skaven feel is very good. Like sometimes they're really great, sometimes they're not so great. Um, it's way more magnified in tabletop, where you can actually have your warp lightning cannon outright explode. Um, can't really do that in a game like Total War because then it makes the game very unpredictable and it's hard to really choose things because you're not going to choose things that are going to explode in a game that has a chance to make him explode. It's a bit different in tabletop, a little bit more tongue-in-cheek play. But if they could somehow make it so Litor's abilities were so good randomly that the the trade-off was worth it. Like maybe that some of these like insane bravado gives him a huge bonus to his melee attack and weapon strength and makes him stubborn. Just something so it's just disgusting. But it has a one in six chance of happening. So it's so so unlikely, but so worth it if it does that you it, it kind of makes you want to choose him. Something that makes him, again, worthwhile and thematic, but not broken, but at the same time not dull. Kind of a you have to strike a pretty hard balance there. And his magic item, he's got one single magic item, the Averland, the Averland Runefang. Marius is an expert fencer who wields his Runefang alongside a long dagger. So he's dual wielding, you know, fang and dagger. And basically what this means is, from a tabletop perspective, is that he automatically wounds and no armor slaves are, saves are allowed. So that's actually really, really strong. So what I could see this being 
converted to is that he's AP anti-infantry and um, it's a high AP. Like it's not just like a uh, a minimal one or a 50% like maybe it's a really high AP so maybe he actually has the ability to do a ton of damage and that's how they kind of counter the fact that he has extremely random and, and terrifying <laughs> abilities that could just completely cripple him so that's something I think would be really really cool here for Late Dwarf is that he is so strong but he has abilities that automatically trigger are triggerable whatever it is that makes it so that there's that double-edged sword to using him but hope you guys enjoyed this this last video here on our Empire Legendary Lords on Marius Leedorf. I was gonna get that video out here on the um, the drop site mass massacre for Warhammer Forty Thousand, but the new trailer drop from Three Kingdoms kind of uh, segued that a little bit. So I'll have that out to you guys here in the next day or two, so you can actually finally finally dive into it. But uh, thanks so much for watching here today, guys. If there's any other lords you want to know about, please go ahead and leave me a comment. I'd love to cover the, the content you guys want. But thanks again for watching, guys. Have a good one and take care.